My night is looking. Oh. They're gonna think I'm a weirdo. Good morning, everybody, or evening, or afternoon. Uh, my name is Marilyn Rosano from Rosano's Casa. And yes, I'm wanting a cup of coffee. About to put it down before I spill it into the flour. Uh, what are we cooking today? We are making spinach and feta goslemi. So this is my version of them. Are they authentic or original? Probably not, but they are super delicious. They're super easy to make. Um, I have the recipe on the blog for free, which I'll link below in the show notes or wherever you may find them, depending where you're watching, listening to this on. Um, and I also have a minced lamb version, which is equally delicious. Um, so I'll link them both for you and I hope that you give them a go because I love, love goslemi so much. Uh, what is goslemi? So it's sort of like a Turkish street food. It's um, a turnover flatbread that is filled with obviously the spinach and feta. I'm sure they have like chicken version. There is um, spiced minced lamb version. Like I said, I have the recipe for them and they are just super delicious. I love this recipe so much. Here in Australia, Sydney, I remember my greatest memories um, are when I was you know, just out of high school going to, we were like markets here and there was always a pop-up Turkish goslemi that have the old ladies rolling the dough, filling them, pan frying them on the hot plate right in front of you. And they were the best. They still are. They're always at every festival or, or market stand and in my opinion, the best. So um, we went to the Easter show <laughs> over the weekend and I just was craving, I'd planned on doing this recipe, um, but because I was craving it, honestly. This is this is where the show ideas come from on my cravings. But um, I was craving it so much that I thought I need to just order one and it was not good. It wasn't like the market stand ones. But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, first, we're gonna start on the dough and then we'll get into the filling. All right, I thought it'd be easier to take you behind the scenes um, to run through the ingredients um, as well as utensils. So I have my stand mixer, my KitchenAid stand mixer with dough attachment um, to make the dough, but you do not need a stand mixer to incorporate the dough at all. So I'm using the two ingredient dough. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about that in the next little segment um, before we get cooking, but I have plain flour because we're making a flatbread. But generally when I make the two ingredient dough, I use self-raising. However, because we're making, you know, like a flatbread, like I said, we don't want it to kind of puff and rise. So plain flour, um, Greek yogurt, natural creamy Greek yogurt. That is literally it for the dough. Um, so I've got four cups. So generally my ratio is I double the flour to the yogurt. So four cups of flour, two cups of um, Greek yogurt. I will incorporate that with a little bit of salt um, I'll let that rest come to room temperature. And our filling is very easy. Feta, I have parsley, spring onions, lemon thyme, or just regular thyme, spinach. Now you can use English spinach, um, baby spinach here. I'm using, I think some people call it chai, but silver beet. I'm just using silver beet. It's very soft and tender. So I've got um, that all washed and cut. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt cracked black pepper and sumac. So sumac gives that really nice, zesty, tangy taste to the dish, almost like um, a replacement for lemon, which we're gonna add at the end, um, just a squeeze of lemon juice when we eat. I'm using sheep's feta. I prefer sheep's feta in this because the taste is a little bit different. I love sheep and goat's milk feta. You can use regular Greek feta as well. It's really up to you what you like. Um, but let's talk about the two ingredient dough very soon. All right, let's just talk about the two ingredient dough just for a moment, please, because for anyone that doesn't know the two ingredient dough, you're going to have your mind blown very, very shortly. So what is a two ingredient dough? It's literally a dough made from two ingredients. So self-raising flour and natural creamy Greek yogurt. So generally speaking, if you want to make a dough that will rise, so whether you're making you know, scrolls or you're making a fake focaccia or something like that, you're gonna use self-raising flour. But if you want to make, say, a flatbread or argos lemmies, we're gonna use plain flour because we don't want it to rise. 
Um, I discovered this two ingredient dough from my mum's like Greek neighbor or something years ago. Um, she kind of, I don't know, brought my attention to it. It was, she didn't create it. I didn't create it. It's been around forever. It's very, very common knowledge. A lot of us foodies use it. Um, but I loved it so much that I created a book, One Dough, 10 Recipes. Can you even see it? It's back to front there. But um, One Dough, 10 Recipes. So I've got a cookbook, a hard copy version, as well as an e-book version, because I really wanted you guys to see how versatile this dough is. Now, I love an authentic, you know, uh, yeast-based dough, but let's be honest, it takes a long time. And sometimes when I'm time poor, especially being a mum um, and doing all this stuff as a one-man band, I don't have that time to wait for the dough to rise. And generally speaking, if I'm making, you know, like a sheet pan pizza with a yeast um, base, I do it like the night before. So there is a lot of forward thinking involved with that whereas with this it's pretty much instant i do like to make it leave it to rest to room temperature i do find that it rolls out a little bit better but apart from that it is good to go um, so in the book i have all these recipes um, my probably my most made from the book is my fake focaccia because again if anyone has ever made focaccia you would know how like it's a process it's not hard but there is time you know made but this dough it turns out beautifully it is easy you know uh, I've also made I think on my page like cheesy mite or veggie mite scrolls using it there is pide in here which is another version of the kind of goslemi but not so much a flat um, flatbread version it's more like you know the boats um, so it has that kind of rise to it um, breakfast pizza whether it's got like bacon and egg in it or a zaata based one um, my empanadas if you have not made my empanadas or empanadas in general you need to get this book and make the empanada the filling is absolutely sensational it pairs up beautifully with my chimichurri recipe that you can find on the blog um, so good you can even do the filling and just put it in short crust pastry panzerati which are like fried a little italian fold over pizzas garlic and chirits or twist and there's some desserts in there whether it's a raspberry lime thyme crostata um, and the chocolate almond baklava braided bread anyway i'll leave this all linked below you can have a little purchase and cook along all right let's get back to it let's get started on the dough first because then while we're prepping the ingredients we'll leave this to rest now like i said it's not really essential for you to let this to rest for too long but i just do find that when you leave it to rest you know even for a couple of hours um covered or wrapped up in some cling wrap i feel that when the greek yogurt comes down to room temperature it is just more pliable and just easier to roll out so that's just kind of my rule of thumb with the dough you can make it ahead of time so you could put this together the night before wrap it in cling wrap put it in the fridge and take it out you know an hour or so before you're actually going to you know, assemble and make all your ingredients. But like I said, you can also do this in a bowl just with um, you know, like a paddle or a spatula. Um, you don't need a stand mixer. So I have four cups of plain flour that I'm adding into the stand mixer as well as my Greek yogurt. So we are going to literally try not to drop this everywhere. <laughs> Oh, the joys, the joys. There's no hiding in this, I tell you. So we're going to actually, we're going to actually, we're going to pour this into the stand mixer. I'm going to try and get all of it. Then I'm going to literally let it mix on just medium low, um, just, you know, for five minutes or so until it kind of all comes together. Then I'll tip it out onto the surface or I'll just incorporate it into the bowl until there's like no crumbs and it doesn't resemble a breadcrumb mix. Um, I'll bring you back to it and show you how it looks. All right, so this is after a few minutes of it being in the stand mixer. You will see a little bit of crumbs at the bottom. Does not matter. You want the dough to come together and be incorporated as such. Now, what I will do, like I said at this point, if you're making this in advance, you could literally just wrap it up in some cling wrap, put it in the fridge um, and take it out. You know, I would, I'll take it out a couple of hours before you're going to use it or at least 45 minutes to an hour to bring to room temp. I'm just going to literally cover the bowl um, just with cling wrap and put it aside. So let's just have a look at the texture. So 
it should not be sticky to your hand, should be together. Doesn't matter if it looks a bit cracky. Cracky, is that even a word? <laughs> Crack like that, I assure you it will come together perfectly when you go to roll it out. Don't try and you know resemble this to a traditional yeast-based dough because it's not. <laughs> it's its own dough, okay? But anyway, so just let it rest and we'll get started on the filling. Let's get started on the filling. So um, I have the recipe in front of me. You can print the little PDF thing on my website. But essentially, very easy, one bowl mix, super duper easy. So I'm using silver beet spinach because it's in season, it's very tender, it's very soft. And usually my parents have an abundance of it in their garden, so they give it to me. Um, but you could use better spinach, English spinach, whatever. So we're going to add that into the bowl. We are gonna add spring onions. So that's half a cup of spring onions, a third of a cup of flat leaf parsley, and about three tablespoons of thyme. I'm using lemon thyme because my parents have it in the garden. You can just use regular thyme, which is totally okay. All in that, cracked black pepper and sumac. I love sumac. If you've never cooked with sumac before, you need to. It is nice and zesty. I think it's derived from a flower for memory, but it's tangy. It is delicious. I love it so much. So that is that. And we are going to crumble our feta into the mix. Now, like I said, I'm using sheep's milk feta. I just personally like the taste of it. If you do not, you can use Greek, Greek feta, which is totally fine. So let me crumble this and we shall come back and have a look how it's all incorporated. Give it literally a mix. You could use your hands. Um, I'll let, just making sure that it's all incorporated. And what we're going to do is I'm going to wipe down my countertop and I'm going to get the dough. I'm going to divide it into portions and then we're going to roll it out, stuff these and grill them. It's honestly, it's so easy um, and so delicious. Come back. I'm just going to get my little... <laughs> Rolly board. Love this so much. I think I bought it off Amazon. I should find the link for you guys. Then I am going to lightly flour my surface. Yeah, you could just do this on the countertop. I'm just doing it on this small little trolley for you guys. Lightly flour it. Okay. Lightly. There's like a kilo on there. I'm just trying. <laughs> Got my rolling pin. Let's grab the dough. All right. Now I'm going to portion this out into four equal pieces because we're going to get four goslemmies out of this. So if it, if you just want the two, literally just half the recipe. Um, so let's grab that. Just four. Look, you can weigh it to make it 100% equal. But honestly, whatever. I'm just going to eyeball it here. My hands are scales anyway. So you will see. I could have left this to rest a little bit longer. I know that it's going to be not as pliable, but your hands, the natural temperature of your hands um, will also help with shaping this dough. Let me come up closer to you and show you the dough. Shouldn't be sticky at all. Now, if you are rolling out the dough when you're making it originally and you feel like it's too crumb, like there's going to be a stage where it looks like breadcrumbs and it's not really coming together, don't be alarmed. That's normal. Just keep at it. I feel like sometimes if you haven't measured it accurately, you can always add like a little tablespoon extra of yogurt, but you might run the risk of it being really wet as well. So, just be mindful. I found that those two measurements, I know there are some online that use a little bit less, I think, yogurt than the flour. I find that it's not as great. So anyway, I'm going to keep rolling this out and then I'm going to bring the camera over at bird's eye view. I'm going to show you how I kind of stuff it, fill it, and then we'll grill it together. Um, do not worry if you feel that the dough has a little bit of resistance. That's fine. It just means that it's still maybe a little bit cold. Don't worry, just keep working at it. There might be a point where you feel like this is not rolling out. Like it will, it will. Even if you leave it just to rest a little bit and then come back at it, 
I promise you it will. You want to roll it out into a rough rectangle. Just eyeball because we're going to flip it over. doesn't matter. I'm just doing a rectangle because that's how they've done it. If you want to do like a circle, that's also fine. I'm doing a rough rectangle as thin as possible. We don't want the ratio. You want the filling to be more than the dough. And don't forget, we're going to sand, like we're going to fold it over because there's going to be dough, filling, and then dough. So you don't want it too thick. And then also that will also impact the cooking process. So anyway, we'll come back and I'll show you how thin I've made. So as you can see, there is a little bit of resistance with the dough, not much. So the longer you leave it kind of out, that's something that I didn't really add in the book, but it's just been something that I've discovered as the time has gone by. I have kind of said in the book that it's ready to go. Like it is, and then you can use it as soon as you've made it. It's just going to be a little bit harder. So we've literally rolled it out to a rough rectangle as such. We're going to put a quarter of the mixture on half of the dough. Like literally, could I have got the most pathetic bloody spoon? <laughs> Roughly like that. I'm going to change things. Irritated. <laughs> That's better. Not really, I'm still making a mess. Now, I didn't pre-cook spinach, there's no need to. Look, you can use um, frozen spinach in the cookbook, an ebook. I have a version using frozen spinach. You don't need to. I find that when you cook this, when you grill it, it gives a little bit more of meatiness to the dish that I quite love. Fold it over that I just press the edges a little bit just to prevent anything falling out. See, we're literally going to grill it, do well, not grill it, pan fry it, I should say. Literally, I'm not even using shallow oil as such. About three to five minutes each aside. I'll bring the camera over and we'll do that together. Just in a neutral oil. I mean, you can use light olive oil. I'm just using a rice bran oil. I to share a tip, another one, about <laughs> So before you roll it out into a rectangle, something that helps it roll into a rectangle is when you have your dough in a ball, literally just make a cut, a little cross cut on the top, and that should help roll it out evenly into a rectangle. Cast iron um, pan, you can use non-stick, it's no problem. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of rice bran oil or well, that thing fell off but i love just want to show you my love for this spray bottle you could just buy it from supermarkets and you just put your own oil in it because that pre spray stuff generally speaking has some nasties in it so we're going to add in quite a bit of oil um, because we do want a beautiful crisp outer surface this is just evenly so we'll do this Medium high heat, three to five minutes each side. So let's come back and see how it looks. Fish grilling, three minutes high heat. I used cast iron. I find that it gives like a nicer flavor, char if you like, but nonstick is totally fine as well. So I've got two out of the four here. And of course, the helicopter's coming. I'm slicing up some lemon slices to serve with the goslemi. Can you hear the helicopter? Oh! I'm just going to take a few. These ones are just from the supermarket. However, you can get um, some beautiful ones if you have like an international grocer near you. Supermarket have them these days, which, and these are. I got gypped. <laughs> um, so you just serve it as such. I'll bring it bird's eye view. We'll cut the goslemi into desired pieces. Um, even though you can eat the whole thing, you will. Hear the crunch. Hear the crunch. So excited. Let me come closer to you. Gotta have a cameraman. Look at that. Beautiful. See how thin the, the um, dough is to filling ratio. I kid you not, when I had this on the weekend, the dough was so thick. 
and the filling was scarce. And I get it, they gotta make money and all that kind of stuff. But we're making it at home, so we don't have to be stingy. Anyway, that bit of lemon juice, have a bite, take a bite of the pickled chili. Happy days, happy days. I also wanted to add that if you are gluten-free um, or gluten intolerant, you can definitely use gluten-free flour um, to substitute the normal plain flour that we used here. If you are dairy intolerant, you can use coconut yogurt as well. It's not exactly the same, it might be a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure how because I haven't tested it myself. I have had a few of my Facebook uh, group members try it and say that it turned out fine and they love it and they use it all the time. Um, so that's people from Facebook and my Instagram um, community. So give that a go and let me know, especially if you have tested it and found that the ratio is a little bit off. I would love to know in the comments below. But apart from that, I hope you love it. The recipe can be found on my blog. I'll link it below. If you love it and love this video, could you please subscribe, like, and share? I would love that and appreciate it so much. Leave me a comment below if you try this recipe and let me know what you think. Um, apart from that, you can leave me a star rating on my blog. I always appreciate it because I love to know people's feedback, different variations, different tips and substitutes that they found um, helpful or useful or tasteful, however you like. And my cookbook, One Do 10 Recipes, can be found on the website as well. There is a hard copy cookbook version as well as an ebook um, available both on the website. There is 10 recipes, both sweet and savory in there, using the two ingredient dough, because I just have to showcase how amazing and how versatile it is. But until next week, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you give it a go. I hope you've been influenced. And yeah, cheers. Bye. Okay, my weird neighbor, start off with one hovering, watching get the back window. Now there's three of them. So we're just gonna eat together. Corner bit is always the best. Nice, crunchy, look at that. Do you know what? I should go over to the fence and just pass them over the plate. I'm gonna do that. Let's bet they'll run. They'll run off. I'll scare them. Enjoy it. These are so good, guys. You probably will never pay ten dollars for a stingy portion of markets again. I guarantee. You. Right. And that's a wrap. Pickled chilies, fresh lemon, little bite marks. <laughs> Perfect ratio of dough to filling. You'll never pay ten bucks for this again.